Yo, 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 yo. Listen, listen, listen. What are y'all doing tomorrow night? Highline Ballroom, September 26th. Queens get the money. Super bad soulless. Havoc mob deep. On it, on it, on it, on it. Highline Ballroom. Internet come through. Stop playing. All right, all right, all right. Talking all right. and we talking. Internets, internets. Ready for I talking. am hyped for another, 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 another episode of Talk Texture in season two. Mm-hmm. Can y'all believe it? We made it to season two. All right. And I'm glad y'all oh, made it here with us. We got a little yeah, talk architecture yeah, yeah. business to go through tonight. Yes. Um, we had a good week so far. So far. All right. We had a we had a nice little show that Just went down so at Sony Hall. Shouts to J Electronica. Shout out to you. Yassine Bay, Funk Flex, yep. DJ Evil D, Slick Rick the Ruler. Shouts to Rock Marcy. He didn't he didn't work that night, but still, that's our man. And we're gonna see him soon. But it was a it was a dope show. The internet came through. King? I yep. seen you there, King. I was there. I seen the magic, you know, it was dope. A lot of good people, a lot of good vibes for hip hop. Good hip hop night. I seen Michael Pratt. Yes. I was there too. I seen you there, Michael. I was at the show. That was okay. a great show. It AKA was great to see Slick White. Rick, Michael Pratt in the was, flesh. You got to sit at the table. With I was no, at the with table no, with no resilience. That's Everybody, right. with no, with no. That's, that's not, that's there was right. no velvet rope. It was no. <clears throat> I was welcomed with open. Nobody arms. shut you down. Not I at all. Sit at the table. They wouldn't let me sit at the no? table. No, <laughs> not enough room. The ratio of the black and white. Uh, <laughs> like, nah, not you. Yeah, it was pretty. Like, you the homie, but you know. Yeah, I heard Brother Briss was there too. Oh shit, <laughs> Brother Briss, Brother Briss, you was Brother Darkness up in there though. <laughs> I knew you was gonna King was like, King, like, yo, they go Briss over there, and I'm like, yeah, where? Yeah. I couldn't see. I couldn't see. Briss, you wasn't smiling. That's why I couldn't see passing Drake. Oh shit, yo. Nah, Briss was dead. For the record, okay, that's dope. The that's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's Saul Goodman, I missed you, but I mean, you was you was working. You was yeah, working. I was working. All right, that's what's up. That's what's up. Well, our guest was in the building that night too. Yes. yes. Um, our guest tonight, Internet, is a classic True Yorker, New York City kid, mm. product of the '90s. Mm. As a matter of fact, that's his movement. Even mm. um, some of y'all might know him as Scrams. Some of y'all might know him as Dick Wolf. Some of y'all might regard him as professional big kid. I like to call him Scram Zeno. Scrams, you know I don't even know your real name, and I don't, and I won't let you tell it on the microphone neither. Yeah, a lot All of right? people don't know my name. Yeah, I have a yeah. lot of a lot of AKs, yeah. you know, call me Scram, Skrilla, Moolah. Damn, you know. D- d- depending on which one they call you, did that? That's how you identify who it is before you even see them. Nah, like they call you from like two blocks away, like Yo Mula. I, I more or less know where I'm at. Oh, it's like in different Bryant. areas, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's how I'm, you know. So in the Bronx, they know you as. Nah, I'm not. I'm not from the Bronx. A lot of a lot of people think I'm from the Bronx. I actually grew up uptown, Spanish Harlem, mm. and then I moved to Brooklyn for high school, and it was the biggest culture shock ever. Mm-hmm. Wow. You know, mm-hmm. imagine living in Spanish Harlem with just Spanish and black kids and then moving to Bensonhurst, Brooklyn, when all the, the racial shit was going on. So that yeah. was a crazy culture shock for me. Yeah, that my, the, my mother and her her, uh, her siblings, they grew up on 116th Street. Yeah. They used to always talk about Spanish Harlem and how... Um, yeah. Eccentric it was, you know. Mm-hmm. See, I mm-hmm. grew up in Taino. That's the real Taino Tower. It's the real Purple City. Mm. And uh, Taino Tower. Yeah, my mother moved in it. I was born in the Bronx in '77, and then when it opened, I think it was early '78 or maybe late '77, we moved there. And you know, it was supposed to be this beautiful complex, but then I crack hit, and shit was the mm. worst shit mm-hmm. ever. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it was like it was like a high rise prison. Yeah, four you buildings, know? beautiful. There was like a water park in between. It's, st- it's still centers. beautiful. I mean, visually, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. indeed, yes, indeed. You know, but, I had a gate around. That, that, but that crazy gate, sometimes, I mean, at night, is is the, the height of that gate. It makes me feel like, like, yo, damn, this this would make an ill setting for some kind of futuristic prison. Like, yeah, definitely, hundred percent. I seen a lot of crazy shit growing up, mm-hmm. you know. But then, like, going back to what I said, it was just like the craziest shit, like. One of the first, like the first two years I cut out of school and it was going back uptown to chill my pops. Mm. I played myself, ruined my high school, but when I when I decided to stay around the neighborhood, like I went to play basketball with my neighbor. So we two blocks away from the crib. He says, oh shit, black kids and runs. 
it, I didn't understand it because mm. I'm like black kids, man. That's I seen that every day. Yeah, and I was two blocks to the crib, but I didn't even know how to get home because I never stood over there. All I knew was a train station to go back uptown. So that shit was crazy, the craziest culture shock ever. I mean, what's crazy, too, is in New York City, you can go from, like, Harlem, you can go for these high-rises, and Harlem is basically built up. Harlem is, is up in the sky. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where, you know, you're talking about three stories, four stories, five stories minimum. Yeah, you know? even back then, before all these high-rises. But now you're in Bensonhurst, and you're really looking at two stories. It, it, the architecture is different. Way different. Family-orientated. Yeah. Slow. I'm used to... 20, 30 people on a block. Over there, it's nobody's desolate. It's empty. Right, right. It was, it was a little crazy, but, you know, my mother didn't want me growing up out there. You know, the risk of getting into more trouble was really bad. But but the hazing that you got to go through now as a high school kid, I mean, you had to go through hazing regardless, being yeah. a new kid in the neighborhood. Yeah. You know, so you got to go through this hazing. You got to go through this kind of indoctrination into this neighborhood. Yeah, but what was good, I went to Lafayette High School, mm-hmm. which was... Um, uh, borderline Coney Island and the Bensonhurst. Okay. So you had all the kids from Flatbush. You had all the kids from Coney Island. You had all the kids from Marlboro Projects. And then you had all the kids from Bensonhurst. So it was like a, a pile up. Oh, a nice little melting pot. Okay, good, good, you good. Know? Good, good, good. So then you felt then you felt a little bit of the comforts that you remember from Harlem, which is just that diversity, that kind of community. You know, and what brought that all together was really me writing graffiti. Yes. And linking with the graffiti, you know, crew. Uh, a degenerate. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so what's funny to me about graffiti, I, I shouldn't say what's funny, but what's beautiful about graffiti is that it connects so many of us in hip hop. It, oh, yeah. It's, it's kind of like it's a element. little bit of a gateway for us. Because it's how you develop your individual style. You know, I mean, we do it through our fashion. We do it through, you know, other things. But that your hand style kind of, you know, speaks before you. Yeah. And, and it also, you can tell a writer by what he's wearing. Mm-hmm. So if you had somebody with some fly, some polo, some North Face, you know he was a writer. Mm-hmm. Because other kids wouldn't, that wasn't their thing. That wasn't their uniform. Right, Not right, at right. All. I mean, right. graffiti writers are off walks. But more than likely, a person... Who had low North Face, Hill Face, Royal Graffiti? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. what kind of what kind of footwear? Back then, yeah, I was cream feelers, mm-hmm. white on white. That was mainly it. I wasn't really too heavy into Jordan because I really couldn't afford them. Mm-hmm. But I knew how to. My stepfather actually put me on to go downtown. To go, I was going on, on Broadway, but he said go to Delancey. Mm-hmm. You get everything, everything you could bargain, get everything cheaper. Mm-hmm. That led me to find the Broadway sneakers. There used mm-hmm. to be a spot called Raspberries. Yes, Jordan ones were nineteen ninety nine all the time. What? Yes, clearance rack, racks, racks, wow. some racks. Yes, and then Broadway sneakers. That's that was Udi spot. The spot and uh, what is the movie where he talks about the kid comes up to him was like, yo, I trade you this gun for these new Jordans. Mm. That was his spot. And a lot of people don't even know about that store. It's around the corner from Stadium Goods. It was right there on Broadway. Where, it was um, on Broadway between Mass Canal Appeal. and yeah, yeah, right yeah. where Mass Appeal is downstairs yeah. on the corner. That yep. was the store. Right before you get to Canal. And right before had, you hit Canal. Right next to the train station, really. Oh, yeah, up the block. Yeah. And then they had the whole rack of every Jordan on the top, and they had every fucking shoe you wanted. Oh wait, wait, wait! wait. He used to get samples. He used to have everything. Yeah. He used to get samples, but you had to wear size nine though. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he had everything. Yeah. Yep. Whatever you wanted, he had. It's not y'all got to get it from other store. He had it. I'm still trying to process a pair of Jordans for 19 bucks. Yeah. Why not? Why Herman's not? Herman's used to be cheap too. Why not? Man. All those spots. Can we can we relive that? <laughs> I mean, you could, but <laughs> it should be Bondulu. <laughs> nah, it eventually get to that. It should be Bondulu. <laughs> yeah, the way yeah. they flooding the market with shit now. It got to yeah. drop. Yeah. Yeah, it will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The game, game. Everything got, it comes to Starberry an end. Price. Price. Starberry price. Yeah. <laughs> Starberry price, sixteen ninety nine. You know, yeah, everything everything does come around, does yeah. come around. But uh, again, oh. so graffiti is this great gateway into hip hop, great gateway into individual style, but also to getting around the city. Yeah. Um, plus, I, I feel like, too, as a Harlem kid, um, growing up in, in the borough of Manhattan, whether it's Harlem, downtown, you're kind of used to just getting around anyhow. Yeah, bus, train. Bus, train, just moving around, whereas people from the boroughs don't really get to other boroughs. They don't really even get to Manhattan hardly. Like, I know cats from, from Brownsville, and for them, going downtown didn't mean leaving Brooklyn. It meant just going to Fulton Mall. 
I know cats from Far Rock and Coney Island that never left the that area. Don't leave that. That they don't need right. to. You got the laundromat, you got the sneaker store, you got the weed spot, right? And you got the liquor store. What else they need? And you got McDonald's, yeah. And you and you got the and you got the, the you yeah, know everything. The food spot, Not yeah. Even McDonald's, the Chinese spot. Yup, yup, yep, yep exactly, with, with exactly. Fried rice and wings. Mm. <laughs> the classic plate. Yeah. Fried hard. Nah. Okay. You eat the tip of the wing? Nope. Okay. You're not a savage. Thank nah. you. Thank you, Scram. <laughs> I thought you might have been a secret sca- savage. Nah. You got to ask him the other part, though. What, what, what? You put ketchup and hot sauce? Or nah. Plain. Plain. Uh, I only okay. put ketchup so on, savage, right? on fries when they mad hot. I don't like ketchup. Mm. Mm. I'm not. <laughs> In- Internet, if y'all can see, y'all can't see this, but right now me, Scrams, and King had a... Uh, Fat boy convention uh, real quick. Uh, you know what I mean? Don't it. listen. listen now we we rehabbing. We we fat boys on rehab though. Yeah, yeah, one bro. thing I'm is I'm doing family. my juice cleanse tomorrow. Nah, I need to do that shit. Three day juice can start off small, you know. But I just can't be around none of these fucks in the room. <laughs> nah, <laughs> like, they might say, yo son, you pull up. Like, nah, I'm good. Nah, one thing I haven't had McDonald's in about five years. That's what's up. I mean, that's I'm trying up. to get me to go to San Loco all the time. I'll be like, yo, yo come on, son. Yo, that, that's foul, King. That's foul. <laughs> that's foul. Let, let me tell y'all something. Yeah. Yeah. This, this nigga A King is the most pickiest yo. eater ever. I'm just saying. I try to introduce this nigga to calamari. He's like, you eat exotic shit like that? Nah, exotic. That's not even exotic. He's like, yo, he called calamari. Like to this nigga that blooming onion. Mm. That's fancy. That's like, oh, y'all Ooh. niggas getting fancy not eating blooming onion? I won't even eat that. I'm not <laughs> that off the table. too much, man. Nah, nah, that's good. That was I just got fried rubber. Today. Fried rubber. Yeah, yeah, we haven't wild. had it in a good place. Right. Probably not. I'm, try, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get this nigga to diversify his yeah, palate. Where you from? Brooklyn? You live in Brooklyn? Yeah. East New York nigga, well, man. I'm from they, East New York. You got to go to Park Slope. This place called Song. It's a Thai restaurant. The calamari does not taste like rubber. It's crispy. It's amazing. What's the name of it? It's called Song. Song. And there's one by the movie theater on Court Street called Joya. It's a sister restaurant. Mm-hmm. Get there, Calamari. Lady Internet, whenever you're ready. Hey. <laughs> so, so, I mean, let, let, let's still work our way through height. Let's work our way through Graf, mm, okay. really, and, and, and the connections that you make through Graf. Well, I met up with, uh, I first got cool with this kid, Suave, from 5MH. 5MH is tied with this crew and from the from the Ville days called RFC. Mm-hmm. Bunch of wild motherfuckers and I, you know, I used to go with them downtown. Give me some of the names. Give me some of the writers from RFC because RFC, I see RFC letters all the time. You see, there's Buster, there's Kel, there's uh, CA who just came home, Jukes, there's uh, Ross who's, you know, who rhymes now. All of these are Brooklyn cats? All of these no, are cats? they're from Manhattan. Okay. The Brooklyn cats was 5MH. It was like a... Uh, like cousins, you know? okay, like like a splinter, like a splinter, okay, yeah. Okay. And the five of crew crews, you know, Cal, Suave, BL, Jukes, you know. But back then, it was everybody in Marlboro Projects was down with five of Major. everybody, but only a certain people went downtown, and that's you know the club scene, Velvet, you know, all those days, Palladium, Friday nights, mm-hmm. Joy, he was at the door, Chris Rita, uh, Tunnel, all types of shit. Mm-hmm. So I got I got with them, you know, and then whenever I was able to sneak out the house, and you know, I would link with them, go downtown. They told me how to rack, you know, but I would like to go racking by myself. Okay, you know, solo racker. Yeah, yeah. I know. mean, I mean, Scrams, were you always like this definitively big dude? Did you always stand out? Yeah, I was always big. Okay. Everybody says you look back, you were skinny. Like, I mean, yeah. I mean, even when you were young, I'm saying even when you were young, yeah, your shoulders were wide. You well, know not what I mean? even I was a big guy, but I used to have a crazy blowout. Mm, mm-hmm. You know. So I mean, your style was such that that I was always noticeable. That's what I wanted to know. Always. That's what I wanted to know because I always, and I always, racking is difficult off rip. No, nah, I wasn't the best. I wasn't the best, but I, I figured what I could get to you know get and then sell to get what I wanted, mm-hmm. or maybe I could steal something from this store to trade for what I want. Dig it, you know. Dig it, dig it. I wasn't the best, but that not at all. Dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. So yeah. I mean, so 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 let's also um, contextualize. You're, you're a generation younger than me, a little more than that. So so your your red zone, your uh, flex with tunnel. Um, I went. To, 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 was at the tunnel. I got a scar on my one of my hands for fighting right here. What what other what other downtown night spots were were, were cracking? I mean, also around that time, I became what they call like a blockhead. Mm-hmm. Like I was chill around the hood, so I would do 
both back and forth. Chill the downtown scene and stay around the way. Mm-hmm. But Friday Tunnel was good. But I, I later on, a little later, I like going to club. This club show it was on. What's that? What was that forty first? Mm-hmm. Uh, before Greenhouse, it was called on uh, Flow. Okay, that was the best Sunday party ever. Okay, okay. Shout outs to Bill Spector who still does parties on Varick. On Varick. Yep. Yeah. Varick was it Van Buren. Uh, I'm gonna say Varick in Spring. Where, where, where Greenhouse was? Yeah, I don't, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. right off the corner. That was the best, and it was both floors. Yeah. It wasn't separate. That was the best Sunday night party ever. Mm-hmm. All ball. Mm-hmm. Fucking Black Rob always did one smoke weed. Uh, Roy Flush was always there. Uh, what other spots? Get that mic, get that mic, get that mic closer to your. What? Yeah, yeah, bring that mic closer oh, to your you mouth. Hit the pole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 so, so I mean, Scrams. The, 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 I'm gonna fast forward real quick to to what we got going on right now. Um, in front of me, I have a, a row project P wing long bill, and you were part of the team. You are you are part of row project. Yes, Dallas. I'm gonna need for you to maybe break down what that is in okay. in English to those of us who are not. Low heads, because that was very thank you, Pratt. Thank you. Specific. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Pratt. Well, let me break down the name of the uh, the definition of the name real quick. Ro uh, was turned from the German, a German. I think he was an engineer, Ludwig van Ro, who, who coined the frame "The Devil in Details." Now, if anybody knows my partner, Tommy, Tommy Rebel, he's an asshole, a pain in the ass when it comes to details. Like, the hack could be 16.8 ounces, and if he says it has to be 16.6, that 1.4, which is nothing, he won't, we, we can't do it until they... they we we got to find a way to shave off yeah, that. Yeah, shave, shave yeah. off the... Whatever. Somewhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, that's the definition of the name. Okay. So, now I'll take it from there. Okay, so 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 when we look at this hat right now, oh. it's, it's called a five panel. And, first of all, what a five panel means is that there are... There are basically five panels of cotton that have been sewn together to create the crown of this cap. All right. The front panel, the one that's at your forehead on the crown, has a Ralph Lauren uh, inspired icon. All right. It's a letter P and it has a winged foot inside it. All right. This icon for Ralph Lauren collectors is affectionately called the P-Wing. Okay? As we go to another panel on the hat, we see a uh, a patch uh, with some striping. It says Stadium. Mm. This is also reflective of a Ralph, of an iconic Ralph Lauren design that was, uh, that was dropped in 92. And it was a series of clothing that all bore these patches, Stadium Series. Uh, we see another patch also that was part of that series. This is RL67. Uh, then we have a nice flag uh, detail. And then we have, I mean, we have the long bill. But this is, this is, this hat is fire. It's a crown. Yes. So when you wear that, you, the polar enthusiasts, they'll identify with that immediately. Like, immediately. Where'd you get that? Immediately. Immediately, I mean that—that's. They know you're serious about your. Well, th- this this hat is a, is for for particular enthusiasts. It's it's a very uh, iconic identification. Yes, sir. Okay, I thought it was <laughs> special delivery. Take, take your time, King. It's take for your time. the people who are in the know. <laughs> yeah. Right. And each product was made to match the complete line. Like if you look at the back of the hat, that baby blue patch. Where's that from? That's from the the stadium jacket. Okay. Now the the side. Where's that from? This from is the from red, the red stadium hat. The stadium hat. Okay. So it, it intertwines for everything. Okay. Same thing with like the snow beach hat. It's made to match everything in the snow beach. The hat's beautiful. That's beautiful. The, tell you the truth, I, I already got one, and what I did was I archived it, King. Like I put it in my in my my stacks, my mm-hmm. archives, and I boxed it. I, actually, I put it in a bag. And I put it in a box. Then I put that box in a bag. Then I put that box bag in a box. Mm. So right now, it's somewhere in my archive, unidentified, unmarked. 
how do you what, what should, we got to do a some oh. kind of documentary series on his that will be on his polo inventory that will we'll get to the bags that will do the polo that, yeah. that, that will only great. come that will only come after my passing oh god that will only come then that's why you're doing it for that <laughs> no yo oh. no I just, I, I just actually I do have a, a semi like I know in the general area that I have it. Do you, um, now, do you store this stuff in the house, or do you have a storage? No, like one all of those storage this, everything outside? is stored in, in one of my houses. Everything is stored either in my apartment in Long Island or, right. or my crib in Brooklyn. But not them self storage. Not self storage, and, and I'll tell you simply why. I've run out of space anyway, but not self storage simply because I know once you put it into self storage, <laughs> then it's like yo, you, you start to forget about it. Yeah. Yep. At least when it's in one of my houses, and I'm in the house. I have to it, Something start, gets you can, triggered You can dig yeah. You can dig You can go into there You can look at it You can be reminded Like ah oh. right. And in a way It's good for me Because do you, do you label stuff? I'm starting to label stuff now <laughs> I, had a, I had a method <laughs> Of putting stuff In certain areas Yeah And and knowing Okay boom This area is, is Stuff that I haven't Touched in 10 years This area is stuff I haven't touched In years. 5 years You know what I mean So I, I kind of had things That's Now I'm starting crazy. to label stuff Because I've, I've, it's gotten Out of control So you're like uh, You would be equivalent To an avid Vinyl collector Now some guys I mean, like I mean sure Thousands of records What would be your Estimated How many um, pieces Value Eva- evaluation of I don't do that I, you, the reason why I don't do that is, is I don't that the value to me hmm. isn't money there is no like like money money doesn't matter no, I don't mean like if it, I'm just saying what, in terms of I'm just kind of get a ballpark figure of how much you collected in terms of a dollar value I've been holding stuff putting stuff aside since I since I could finally get my own money to buy stuff but you gotta look at it like this it's like the stock market. Mm. It's what he's paid or what's the value of it now. Mm. The stuff fluctuates. You know, he could that's have something too. that's worth big money now. Yeah. Or it's fucking like, it's on sale. You know, uh, someone offered me 4000 for my Tianjin phone posit. The Tianjin phone posit was yeah. they're trying to... Yeah, uh, I know. When it first came out, a dude offered me 4000 for it. That's sneaker con. How much you pay for it? I, it was given to me from Nike. Mm. That's and a tough one. what you end up one. doing? I kept them. Mm-hmm. That's a good man. Mm-hmm. I would have walked out of right. there exactly. and some other shit. Mm-hmm. I kept him. I kept him. Yeah. I mean, again. Damn, but that's how much they're willing to go for. It. That's crazy. Yeah, that shit was like four K. I mean, can't I, get that shit. I've seen them in stadium goods. Now they're not. They're not that high. It's, it, it was about three thousand. Now they had them for sale. But um, again, and Lord knows, I mean, three thousand, whatever. But but again, that's just money. That's simply money, and, and the things that I'm into, um, it, it it goes past money. That that goes back to what Rebel just asked me that he was like, "Yo, you, I got to ask you a question." I'm like, well, he goes, "Are you a hoarder or are you a collector?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "I don't know." <laughs> I, I mean, I I would say I, I I'm not gonna speak for you. I'll tell you for myself. I'm a bit of both. Um, I am a collector. Um, there are times though that I do make. Um, where I, where I need like retail therapy, or I need oh yes, you know what I mean and that's you, real. You know where I do? You know where I end up with? I end up with more socks than I than I've definitely hoarded socks. I, can't, I have your socks, the Jordan one. <laughs> it's in a, it's labeled. I don't know if it's in my storage or back we, in the we, closet. Then we got to stay connected. We got to stay connected because no, I, I need those socks. Yeah, yeah, I got. But um, yeah. but I'm a little bit of both. I'm a little bit of both because again, with with Roll Project, with with these hats. The detail that you guys found, and what's so ill is is how you guys put these out, and then Ralph Lauren got aggressive with his retro releases, and he did not match the spirit that you guys found with these hats. And when I say spirit, I mean the detail. Because yeah, remember, it's like it's like uh, like if I came on my first rap album, it's my whole life into one. So that's every our whole life, you know. Me and Tommy, we have some contribution for people, but thirty, twenty, kid, ten years, all into that. Yeah. So it's gonna be your best. Yeah. You know, he's lacking like the new products are, to me is lacking like emotion. Yeah. It's just like here, no real story. What they did with the climb hoodie, they did a screen enlarged. They didn't scale it right, right for the other sizes come on you're a billion dollar company you could do way better than you could that. do better than that you could do way better. better you especially 
you could do better for for the people that have been loyal to you for all these decades. Can I ask you both a question? Do you spend more time looking for classic pieces? Or do you still like sh- like look at what they're releasing and shop for any hidden jewels in today's releases? I mean, I have tons of classic shit. I you have know? everything I've wanted. Yeah, I, I I get stuff from him. I, the one piece I, I get wanted stuff from Scrams was mm-hmm. that Blue Crescent, and he came out, and it's way better than the original because the original one was actually a woman's knit, and it was wool, and the bigger size was large, so you would have to stretch that shit. To fit, mm-hmm. I can't. Even if I stretch it now, it wouldn't fit. It's a new one. It's a better kind of wool that does not itch. It fits. The crest is bigger. That's all I. You know, that's all I wanted. He's done some things within his retro program that are beautiful. The that crest are, that, are, that beautiful. are on time. That are on but time. How horrible is that fucking Sui and Uni shit? It's disgusting. No, but that was that was that was not that lacked the passion. That shit belongs at VIM. <laughs> <laughs> that shit lacked no the passion. No disrespect to Andy in the polo store, but that shit. You, if you ever been to the polo store, he sells that other stuff in there. The shit could fit in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He, that shit lacked he, the passion. But yeah. but again, he's a billion dollar company. He's a billion dollar company, and, and he's really right now at this point just throwing shit up against the wall. It's it's like when Steinbrenner died. The team didn't know what to do. Ralph stepped down. They're scrambling to see what they can do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, what are what are they missing? Like what is like? Because I know that Passion, like, Polo's stores meaning, have been love. suffering. Yeah, yes, and 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 really, I think a connection to why these retro designs, why these graphic pieces are even valuable to anybody. So it it, it really means that I mean, if, if the company cared. And I mean, I, you imagine they do. I mean, they want to keep making money, and you want to develop new customers. You want to get people who are going to be as passionate as we've been for twenty five years, thirty years. Of I mean, there's times I've sold everything I had, had to discuss for it. You know, then you figure out how to get it back. You know, it's so like a love hate relationship. It's like your first I've never, I never cashed out. I've never cashed out. I've never cashed out. I mean, I, I take my time. I certainly take him I've sold shit. taking breaks, but I've never cashed out because the thing is, I mean, everything that we want to do, when you need to go on a job interview, when you need to code switch, you pull out some tweed, you pull out some unbranded shit. You know what I mean? Rob Loren has always kind of had that oh, thing definitely. for you. Oh, definitely. always had that. You know what I mean? When you want to be sporty, when you want to be... I mean, even now, right now, you got on one of, you got one on, uh, one of the script hoodies that they just released. And I remember when you was rocking it in a white, I was like, oh, I like that shit because the, uh, the stitching was white also. Yeah. So it was a nice white on white. But now you went and customized it, kept the stitching white, and, and got a camera on pink. Well, the funny camera shit is I dyed a baby blue first. Dig it. I went to fucking uh, what's the Tony Touch party? Uh, Toka Tuesday. Yeah, yeah. I like to drink red wine. Mm. <laughs> Big blue <laughs> chick wants Glass. to dance all over me. Uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. All over red wine. Mm. So I hit it with the Tintex to remove the color mm. white again. I found the box of pink, threw it in there, it worked, and it came out. Yeah, yeah. It came I out like good. to wear pink a lot because my mom's had breast cancer, mm. so you know it's, it's a nod to her. Dig that. That's and I'm dope. also I'm I'm tying in some merch that I'm doing. I'm doing the show. I even I really haven't spoke about this. I'm pushing it back to maybe February, March Excuse because me. I'm working on a book. Mm. You know, documenting my life, all the weird shit. Because not only do I got polo, I got old club flies, I got old newspapers, I got old toys, I got so much other brands. Like, Are you a hoarder or a collector? See, that's the <laughs> shit. Like when I see something I like. Uh huh. And especially if it's somebody I know, I'm supporting, I'm buying two, three. Like, there's a brand, there was a brand called Orchard Street. Mm-hmm. A lot of people aren't f- too familiar with it. You know, he used to hand give your shit to Puffy, Jay. A lot of people wore stuff. They got a little big, they had a falling out, the company went under. Mm-hmm. But the guys are doing great on their own. But they did the champ at a fresco dunk. I don't know if you guys are familiar, remember that? No, which, which, which dunk was that? It was, they, they customized the dunk. And Nas wore, I think, to High 97 with the green St. Patty Mets jersey. Okay. Except the orange and green dunk. Okay, okay. With the OS on the side. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Orchard Street, yes, so yes, yes. So I got something. I can't let the cat out the bag. Mm. That's tipping my hat to them. I'll show you guys off air, 
but it's going to be part of the show. Mm-hmm. I want to give back, like, original companies like J Money, King of New York shirt, was everywhere. Mm-hmm. He's still doing his thing, but I'm doing something with him for the show. So I'm giving back to the people who are relevant, that didn't make as much noise, that should have, right? you know, and it's going to be, you know, it's going to have some type of pink involved, and part of the proceeds are going to go to a, a, a cancer foundation in my mother's name. Great. Dope, 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 dope. Amazing. dope. Um, yeah. You know what? Let, let, let's uh, jump over to product of the '90s. Yes, that's a product. That's a project. Me, Scuff, YKK, known, well known throughout the world. Writer and my another partner, Artek, who's very well known in the graphic design world. Let, let me tell you some fly shit. The building that you hosted the um, the panel, Pratt, uh, Pratt, for ten years. I worked in that building for Charlotte Architects. That's dope. They own the building. They sold it to Pratt. Um, so I worked in that building from uh, 88 to 98. And you seen that shit change completely. Seen the whole block change. Seen the whole block change. But I mean, it, it was it was just from my memory. It was like a beautiful 360 to come into that building to to sit for your panel, you know what I mean? And not only that, but you had a space for me up front too. Yeah, you know, because I didn't old. even get the chance to see the show. I watched some of it on the get back because it got so crazy. I had to play security. Yeah, you know, uh, our tech hosted it, and me and Scuff had to play security. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't think it was going to turn out like that. It was, but it was, it was I had perfect. To shut the doors. We need more. We need more of that. Well, we're working on all that. I'm also. Gonna start doing those, but I want to do it right. I just don't want to, you know, grab whoever people say the influence, which is bullshit. Yeah, that's why you know I had Peter Paul up there. Now Peter Paul is a little more prominent, mm-hmm. but in the early nineties, Peter Paul was that guy. Yes, you know, early night. I mean, listen, Peter Paul was P- the Peter fucking Paul, man. Peter Paul from the eighties. Now Peter Paul is old like yeah, me. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Don't <laughs> listen. He might shave his mustache and nah, shit. Peter he still Paul dance is, around like he's young. He's old like me. Somebody, I, I tip my hat to. You know, back then you wanted to be fly like the drug dealers. And the dancers. Mm-hmm. The dancers had all the fly shit and all the women, and they got all the attention in the club. That was when you danced in the fucking club. Yes. Not standing around. Yes. And if you couldn't dance, you would try to. And those were the days. Yes. And even all the hard rock stands, because that's the way to get the girls. That's yeah. facts. Yeah. That's so facts. I had Peter Paul, Dante Ross. Mm. I had uh, Jess from A Life, and I had. Alan Cat. Ah, uh, Alan Cat. Yes, yes, it's Cat. And you know, Cat's been around, you know, Stress Magazine. I still have every issue. That's another thing. I have all magazines. Yeah, you got Crazy Mag too? Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. I know I still I know I still got a few Stress Magazines. I Stress was a really good mag too. It's great magazine. Stress was you a really good mag. You know why? Because they tapped into the people who were really m- moving and shaking and had, you know, it, work. It, it was a great time too. I mean, the, the funny thing is, is, is like hip hop had some really great movements. That that happened early on, because yeah. nobody was really regulating at that. Once once the money came around, it changed. It changed, but but it, just because money came to it didn't make it better. No, money came to it, and 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 the wrong people holding the purse strings had the money. Like mo- money, like money. My boy explained to me. He said this right. He came from jail, fixing and shit. He was like swam. You know, you could put money places here and there. It's not going to fix it. It's just a Band-Aid that's over the situation, and it's going to break. You're going to have to keep on doing it. So what you have to do is fix it, you know. So hip-hop, I, I feel like it's being fixed now, but it's still all about the money. But you got, like, the Joe Butter podcast. I like that. He speaks his fucking mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, I mm-hmm. feel like people being honest is coming back in style. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people. Why well, you guys? Don't yeah, like, oh, no, no, well, we no, had a no. conversation. He, 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 he needs to drink some water. He needs to drink some water. Thirst. He needs to drink some water. I need to hear this. Mm. <laughs> no, no, no. But, no, but, but being honest is back in style. I think because it's harder to lie. It's harder to hide shit now yeah, because wait, everything's on Front Street. So you might as well. Oh, hold on for a second. It's it's even easier to lie because of yeah. because of technology. Wild it's even lies. easier to edit. There's a lot of lies, but. That somebody could always pull your card. Internet, the Talk of Texture podcast will be at the A3C Festival this year. 
October 4th to the 7th. Talk and Texture in Atlanta. Come hang with us. A3C is going to be crazy. Internet's A3C Festival, October 4th to the 7th. Be there. That's true. I mean, I mean, listen, when I first came into journalism, uh, I used a, a pen name. Well, simply, that was a lot of people did that. Simply because like the people I would get info from, record industry folk people, didn't want their business. Look at right the rap right band in the back of the source magazines. Even what's the show? Two Coast Comfort with the guy with the cow. Right, you right. Know, everybody had you know, aka a, right. a pen name. So, all right, all right. Here I'm. I'm taking internet right now. I'm taking a little vitamin supplement break because Dallas Penn is old. While you're uh, doing that, I was going to ask. I know that Just Blaze is a collector of, of polo. Uh, are there is there like a top five polo collectors like in in the community? My top five people won't even know who they are, and no shit on anybody's current. You know, Just Blaze will be in top five. No, well, what well, in popular culture? <laughs> Just exactly. Blaze will be in top five, um, simply because Just Blaze have secret shit. That he won't show nobody. What it means for us to shit. Like he have um like the same slaves that Ralph Lauren has. <laughs> Just Blaze has a little basement with it. Nah, I fuck with Just. Just is my man. Like I talk to Just. We talk, we talk about no, they polo. They regular sized people. <laughs> Just has Just you, you know Just has guns. He puts guns on them. But All right. I, I got I got a kid that can shut anybody down. Who? Uh, Around the way guy You know I went to school with him His Instagram You know I, I don't speak to him much His Instagram is Live Like Us mm-hmm. Illest low collection Ever Okay Nobody's fucking with him Okay Nobody Okay Where, where's, where's, he, where's he the hardest at? He has Whatever you consider ill He has Multiples Leathers Suede Talking about cresses mm-hmm. Every circle ski. So everything bears that nobody has. Son is a infinity bear. That's imaginary. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of fake shit. A lot of people talk about. Somebody just brought that up the other day. I'm like, bro, leave that alone. <laughs> shit ain't real. I know. I know people that make shit up. My man Fong, they used to work at Whole Yips. Mm-hmm. Was a famous low spot. Mm-hmm. Used to lie to people. People believe him. You know, that was. I would say. I say ninety six to like to nine eleven. That's mm-hmm. when they closed. Mm-hmm. It was one of the biggest spots where everyone got go trade low mm-hmm. in the basement, right inside Century Twenty One. Mm-hmm. Chinese cat ate phone, and then that lot mad people worked there delivering food. But that was the melting pot. If you wanted to go trade low, if you knew Fong, you would, or you didn't, you would go working in the P tennis cycle. Like, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, then it went to Broadway. It went to the Wendy's on Broadway. But uh, this time, like, Justice, you can say top five, you know, because, but the people in the know, in the know, like, Hova's collection is crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Hova's crazy. Hova's my guy. Yeah. And and then, not only that, but I mean, uh, what I love are people who have the fly shit and then doubles and then triples. Yeah. You Hov was a person when I needed some money, I would go sell him some polo. <laughs> like, you know, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's crazy. He's crazy with it. He's crazy. But with your it. shit had to be brand fucking new. Yeah. But yeah, there's a lot of people, you know. But you know, a lot of people these days, like people would throw Sean Weatherspoon into that conversation. Mm. Mm. You know, he has a lot of shit. Who, can, who will put uh, Sean Weatherspoon in that? A lot of people that are not in the uh, circle, okay. like you know. All right. You you put up a poll, and I guarantee his name will be up there. He has a lot of shit. Okay. Because he okay. bought it. Does he deserve it? Yes, he paid for it. Okay. But is he you know involved? No. Did he was he a student in the game? Yes. Mm-hmm. So it, that's a tough conversation. I mean, uh, an answer to save a top five, you know. Okay. But then I know the top one. That's it. <laughs> if you, you look at this page, you'll, so, you'll know what I'm talking about. Okay. Okay. I'm going to go follow him. I'm going to go follow him. I'm going to go follow him. But I mean, for for me, um, just always inspires me because he'll have multiples. 
Wait, Jess is a millionaire. He's supposed to have I multiple. I know that, but that, forget about that. Forget about that. Forget about that. I'm not a millionaire. What am I doing with multiples of shit? You're a hoarder. Like, yeah. <laughs> I like right. Jess because Jess is a humble, he's a straight up guy. When we talk, it's never always about polo. It's about sure. the family. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Jess is a good dude. Sure, sure. I never got nothing bad to say about Jess. I got to bring him some hats. I've been holding him for a while. He's going to kill me. Yo, Jess, don't kill him. Don't kill him. Don't get- we worked on a project together. We did the, I did the casino bucket hat. Help do the, the sneaker. Did you do that? Did you do that bucket hat for? Uh, but it yeah. didn't come out the way I wanted it to. Okay, it came out okay. It okay, was a pack of shoes. Yeah, yep. And they, those are the two uh, casinos on the wall with mine. Yeah. Oh, okay. Dig it. Dig yeah. it. And, Dig uh, it. Justo was willing to have a five minute conversation with me in the driver's seat of his his Batmobile. Mm-hmm. So I'll never have anything bad to say about him. No, because he, he could have just bet off at a hundred. No, he, he's a never good. Thought of he, he's a me. he's a good good soul, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's incredibly not, regular, and he can he could be cocky. He could be on that shit. He could, yeah. But oh, he does. Not. He does. Nah. No. Oh, see, then then yeah yeah yeah. But it's no. a humble brag. I never see. I respect the humble brag. Yeah, that. But I never see. I've never seen him like man. Fuck out of here. Fuck you. I ain't got time. Oh no 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 no. You don't act like that. You don't. I've seen him shake people's hands. Yeah yeah. And you see it in the face. He don't want to talk to this person, but he does it. No, no, no. When you get to really know just, that's when he, as a friend, he shits on you. Be like, yo, be like Dallas. I remember when I went to Redline. I cooked for everybody in the studio. Dallas, you ain't got shit to fuck with me. <laughs> like, like he won't say it like that. Nah. He'll, be, he'll be like, oh, he'll oh, just throw something over. Yeah, yeah. He'll, be, he'll, he'll drop, he'll drop a black label leather <laughs> on the floor, like, and then kick it over by him. <laughs> like, oh, oh, you ever seen that right there? So, there, so That's hilarious. Stuff. I don't think one person can see everything ever. Yeah, because there's so much shit. So much shit over. You know, people are making noise because Ralph Lauren uh, did this collaboration with the Yankees and has a Yankees logo on a jacket. And what I'm trying to tell people is that that listen, as popular as the Yankees are, whether they won 25 World Championships in their storied career, 50 years of Polo Ralph Lauren, how many? It's 51. 51, right. They're celebrating <laughs> you know, 50 now. You're right. But how many years has he put out a collection that's been incredible? No, every. Throughout, there's always. A there's few always something in there gems. that's heirloom status. There's always something in there that's hand knit, that's so well made that it's a timeless piece. Mm-hmm. So, to me, like, what's really more iconic? What well, I was a little mad at Gucci just did a satin jacket Yankees. Oh damn! Not so. I, I forgot. Internet's uh, uh, scrams is on it like that. Yeah. If I'm, Louis did it, if, if if Gucci did it, if yeah. Supreme did it, scrams got it. They did a fucking. They did dad hats. Gucci Yankees. It's whack though. I mean, it's gonna sell, but mm-hmm. they did it. But I get the whole story. He's from the Bronx. Yeah. They did a baseball. They did a yes. glove. Yes. It was dope. My homegirl told me that they were going to release it on the app once he threw the first pitch today. Yeah. That's dope. Yeah, I seen it. I seen it. I seen I, it. I wasn't paying attention to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I had a uh, coach baseball um, uh, got Jeter to sign it. Um, and I thought to myself, oh, shit, damn, I'm one of Jeter's hoes now. <laughs> Jeez. I mean, didn't, didn't, oh, yeah. didn't Jeter like you know when when you left his crib, he he gave you a gift bag, Give a gift box. Yes. Yeah, yeah, with, with, he does with that. Signed, with a sign I mean, ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like crazy. I would take it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'd take it. Sure. I mean, He's, listen. Well, I mean, Dallas favor. would take Come it, but on. he wouldn't sell it to anybody. So I don't know. Yeah, what I'm not selling it. Internet, just for y'all information. All right, Jeter did not. Uh, put anything in my tuchus. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> was there anything in that ball though? I mean, listen, he no, signed he the ball. He would take the gear, go. not the. He signed the ball. He signed I was the at ball. the game when he hit the, the rear. Twenty five hundred to hit something like that. Mm-hmm. But it's funny. I'm a Mets fan. Yeah. Yeah. So my friend that got the tickets. We were sitting on the first base line. My, me and my other homie it was gallivanting, looking for women, drunk in the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> we happened to sit down right when he hit it, and everybody's going crazy. We're like, okay, we're going back to the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, for my money, D- Derek Jeter is the best Yankee of all time. Nah. For my money. For my money, I'll tell you why. The greatest why. Yankee of all time was Steinbrenner. Oh, go. 
Facts. And it goes Facts. Back. They should have buried him in the stadium. Facts. 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 He got shit done. You that won a championship, was, Wade Boggs. That was internet. You shit. just you just said the most biggest facts ever. The greatest Yankee of all time was Steinbrenner. 100 hmm. percent After Steinbrenner comes Jeter. Because Jeter was the only nigga that could go through Steinbrenner for his entire career and not get fucked up by New York. Yeah, he was a class act also. He didn't get caught fucking everybody, even though he did. You know, he, didn't he fucked everybody. Steroids. He fucked everything walking. It's, it's him and Nick Cannon that took down everything. True. Mm. Scoop. Yeah. <laughs> Scoop the scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count on Ray J. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Ray J won. Ray J won, but nah, he nah, hit nah, it nah. first. <laughs> hey. I mean, listen, but Nick Cannon, Nick Cannon is a monster. Mm. Nick Cannon is a monster. So I mean, Scrams, you know what? I'm glad we got you here too, because now we can we can talk about things. Talk about whatever you want. I told you we can go cultural now. Talk to me and and rap. Okay, rap right now, particularly out of New York City, is in a funny place because it isn't really about rap any longer. It's about the spectacle yeah. uh, of entertainment. About branding. Right. And everybody has all the tools right on their iPhone. To, to, all the social medias. Upload YouTube. You can stream live. That's all you need. But what about music? Music doesn't matter no more. Damn. Whoa. I'm, I'm saying general. Oh, no, yeah, no, 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 no. I got you. No, speak. No, yeah. speak. You're speaking but, facts. But look at 6 9 He's screaming on the track. Right. Kid is a genius. <laughs> Kid is a genius. It's a millionaire in one year. Or oh, more than a millionaire. Genius marketer. Yeah, he was a troll beforehand. They said, you know, for all reading. Well, I listen to old shit. I go on YouTube because I still have cassettes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, I left that my radio that play cassettes in my exercise. I got to get a new one. But <laughs> I go on YouTube, type in natural elements. I listen to old cannabis. Mm-hmm. You know, what else? Let's see what I'm, what I was just listening. To. So, so you so you enjoyed that rapidy rap show the other night? Uh, yeah, it's J Electronica. When the fuck you gonna see him? Yeah, he's gonna go fucking hide in the cave. Everybody was really hyped to see Rock. I, I was hearing. Yeah, I was excited to see Jay. Yeah. You know, shit happens. Yeah. Slick Rick did his thing. Flex body did. Yes. Yes. Flex over Capri. I'm sorry. Wow. Listen, listen. Flex over take. Capri. Listen, you, here's one thing we got to admit. You could say what you want about Flex. And I guess all of us, if you have a job or you have a boss, you got to appease your boss. Of course. But when you on your own time... Mm. Can you fucking hit the shit out the park? When Flex is on his shit, when he's talking shit, I don't think anybody can see him. Yeah. That EPMD ever, nobody fucking with him. Not, K. Capri's an animal. Yes. Kill any party. Not yes. to take nothing with him, but I'm fucking with Flex. Yeah. Yeah. Flex is definitely... In a battle, Cap- Capri's taking him. I mean, listen. But Flex listen. is no chump. Flex bodied it. He killed it. Bodied and it. And then when he played the fucking older music, he played you know, 50s the records. He did a 50s record I set. Know, I'm old. I know. Jitterbug. Yeah, 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 yeah. Flex bodied it. Flex bodied it. I was, I was definitely I'm playing. I'm a wanderer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was, I was definitely. And, and the funny thing was, I had actually spoke to Flex uh, a few weeks ago when we first uh, uh, got the bill together, and um, like I had never spoken to him before. And I just had this like 45 minute conversation with him and we talked about cars and we talked about crate digging. And what I realized was, you know, despite what you hear on the radio, like the the persona he's created, this guy lives and loves this shit. Of course. I mean, obviously now, that, now, now it makes sense to me. He's been relevant for how many years? Now it makes sense to me. Not simply relevant, but working, working, steady working. Because because I, I don't fuck with relevancy. That's all subjective. But somebody who's been working, again, like Jeter, through his entire career, a New York Yankee, and the captain, Flex, the prime spot at Hot 97, the flagship for urban music in New York City for the better part of three decades. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So here, here we're we looking at the Derek Jeter of, of radio, of urban radio. 
I would say you said it the other way around. Mm. Jeter's the flex. Jeter's the flex. Mm. See, all right, thank you. Because flex is still rocking. Because Flex is still right. He's still playing. So, I mean... His career lasts longer than Jeter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Jeter took down some... some. I'm, I'm saying Flex took took some things down, too, I'm know. sure. You know, we're not... We took down stuff well, loving, too. He got in trouble. Ayo. Ayo, ayo. Yeah, we're not going to go... We're not going to go into the docket. We're nah, not going to go into... Flex. The... <laughs> so, yo, Flex, I need you to get my boy Nems up there, bro. He will body that. For real, for real, for real. So... New York City culturally rap and you're not even fucking with the new shit you you understand you What's see it exists new? the only new person that's relevant to me in New York isn't new he's been around for a while mayhem right right well I mean it takes 10 years to become an overnight success anyway 100% and that's another person that works yeah you know yep yep so I mean Griselda none of those guys though nah I, when he says New York, I'm thinking the five boroughs. You know, Buffalo is New York. I love their movement, too. Yeah, yeah. Griselda's, Griselda's hot. Griselda's hot. Yeah, that's a whole other animal. Griselda's hot. Griselda is more, I mean, to me, because they're Buffalo, like, they're more really Midwest. I, I understand. The, I, I get it. Oh, I mean, because Buffalo, damn near close to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh, closer to Detroit. Detroit. That shit is is the bottom of the dust. Like the fucking video with with Just in the beginning, and Eminem's <laughs> talking. They got a bit of a blue collar feel up in like that Great Lakes area. I've never been up there. Absolutely, Ooh, absolutely, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's 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 that forty below weather from October to April. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? I don't want that shit. Yeah, I yeah, like yeah. The heat. Yeah, you know, you becoming a snowbird, man. I see you doing a lot of Miami, a lot of L.A. Yeah, man. I'm done with New York, honestly. Mm -hmm. Give me two more years and I'm out of here. Mm -hmm. This is done. It's not for us no more. Yeah. You know how rich we got to be just to be poor in New York City? Exactly. I'm, exactly. I'm fucking filthy rich. And the water's right here, right under my nostril. Like, if I open my mouth you to gotta, say something. You got to pack bags. You got to sell drugs. You got to work construction. You got to do the door of the club. Yep. And a coat check the other night to live comfortable, comfortably in New York. To keep my lights on. Yep. To keep my lights on. Yep. Yep. So so. If I can ask you, what do you really miss about the 90s? For me, I miss the community. Like, you know, my, my neighbor was going to take care of me. As well, much as, you know... That's what I feel is lacking. When I was younger, if I did something wrong, I would get grabbed by an adult by the ear, smack in the back of the head, what the fuck you doing? Go home. Two days later, or... They, or oh, the neighbor from down the hall's cousin seeing you doing some fuck shit. What, what the fuck you were doing? I don't know who it was, so I can't even lie. I gotta be honest. Yeah. It, everybody took care of each other. Now, everybody doesn't pay attention. They'll pick up their phone and record you instead of, you know, fixing your wrongs. You know, what's the saying? It takes a village to... What's, yes, it takes a village to raise, to raise yeah. a kid, yeah. It's, it's none. And that goes back to what we just said. Both parents have to work to pay for that apartment. You know? Mm -hmm. For that kid to live in. That kid's being raised by his grandma or the phone. I was a latchkey child. Mm -hmm. You know, my pops wasn't around. You know? But I had a community. You know, like, the fit, it was it was... You always had somebody to talk to, even if you didn't want to. And and well, hold on for a second. Too, there was also an understanding amongst adults too that that they had the neighborhood kids' best interests at heart. There, there came a point where an adult, a corresponding adult, could not discipline a kid that wasn't their child. And that's that's part of the breakdown of the village. Yeah. Because if if, if another adult can't Say to somebody who's not their kid, "Hey, yo, what are you doing?" Or like, "Yo, I'm gonna tell you your mom." Do, you can't even do that to your own kid now, right? Mm. Not school, in public. You, mm. you you hit your kid. God forbid he gets a mark. He goes to school. What's that? Oh, nothing. ACS. What's going on? You should be allowed to hit your kid. I'm, I'm not saying abuse him, hurt him, but discipline him. We Correction. turned out good. Yeah. Correction. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I, I got bloody beatings. I got hit fucking every day. The babysitter was Jehovah's Witness. You think I went there, I dropped my book bag and left every day and got hit. <laughs> but I'd rather that than me in that fucking house. And you know what? I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not mad at my mother at all. 
That's what she had to do to keep me out the street because it was bad growing up. But, you know, that was her way of, because I was hard-headed. I didn't listen. Punishment, kneel on rights, none, none of that shit bothered me. I, I wanted to be outside. But now kids want to stay out inside or they want to just watch other kids open toys on fucking YouTube. Mm. <laughs> it's sad. So stay inside and do, and, and do worse shit than we did when we was outside. Driving somebody to suicide or do your tweets and your yeah, Instagram that's, it's, posts. We're smoking plastic weed. Or that K2 shit. K2 that, K2 that, shit. Yeah, that K2 shit. You got some of that, Chris? <laughs> Yo, I, I smelled some of that shit the other day, and the worst part about it is it starts off with the nice smell, but it finishes with the plastic. Yeah, I was so scared. Of, I was so scared of my mother yeah. getting caught that I didn't try weed till a few days before I turned 27. My lord. And mind you, it was around me mm -hmm. from my pops, sure. mm -hmm. my uncles, my cousins, wow. everybody. I used to sit in the staircase. They were smoking weed. What I did, I used to go to the pharmacy and steal an El Marco. I don't know if you guys know about that marker. It's called El Marco. And when they were smoking, I would go to the top floor mm -hmm. and right in the staircase, so I bumped into them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm. What, what inspired you to smoke at 27 if you hadn't done it until then? I want to see what the big fuss. Yeah. I was like, I was like, yo, this shit burns. It tastes nasty. It was coffee. I don't really want this shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you ain't missed nothing. You ain't missed nothing. Oh yeah. I mean, I mean, listen. <laughs> more for me. <laughs> <laughs> Not for nothing. A good token in there helps. Okay. But like, I'll get a pre roll, or I won't fuck with the edibles. Cause those shits fuck you up. Just take a bite. And yeah. Chill. When I was working on a project with Action Bronte, he gave me some. He was like, yeah, take two of them. I said, yeah, wait a minute. This guy's been doing this for years. Right. I, took, I took half a bite of one, and I was stuck on the couch for like two hours. Yeah. Now, imagine what I ate even one. Yeah, you saying, he was saying you up. Yeah, no, no, no. I mean, that's just Bronson. That, that's know? just Bronson. If you, if, you, if you fuck with Bronson, you go dab with Bronson. Hey, no, I wouldn't even, Bronson, I wouldn't even bring dab. me two edibles. Mm -hmm. I would have dab. That shit's like smoking <laughs> crack, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember when crack mm -hmm. hit. You never smoked crack then? Hell no. Okay, you're not old enough. To, to, I mean, I, I've, I've smoked crack. I remember when crack came up. I smoked dust. I remember when, when methadone first popped off. Mm -hmm. Right across the street where Clinton is at mm -hmm. was the methadone. It's a museum now. That was the methadone clinic. I used to go with my father. He used to go get that shit and then sell it and then go buy crack. Mm -hmm. Can't, you know, coming back from the, the service, that's all it did was get high up there. Mm -hmm. You know, then that's when shit hit big, you know? And shit happens. I know. I know. Motherfuckers still fucking with crack. Crack is a rich person's drug. I know motherfuckers still fucking with crack. Well, I feel like like uh, my man that I was in junior high with. He's my age. He's still smoking crack. This nigga's DNA needs to be cloned because this nigga is still smoking crack. Well, anything in moderation is good. I mean, he's still smoking crack. crack. The day. How the fuck? <laughs> Take the edge off. How the fuck? All right, but I mean, but that, but the next new shit that we got, we got motherfuckers on now. The OP shit we got niggas on now is the, this is the worst. I mean, they pushing that on everybody. You know, you get hurt here. Take these painkillers. I'm trying. I'm. I've been avoiding, man. This fucked up sciatic I've had, man. Listen, I got a. I got a beautiful doc, man. He was like, yo, do you want to take that that pain shit? And I said, nah, man, because I see the niggas that come through. That's paint up. And I'm like, nah, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to power through. Mm. I'm gonna have to power through, you know, cause um, you know, I don't want to take the edge off to yeah. where I, you know. But then you just gotta keep up in the dosage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, until I take the edge off, yeah, until I'm too right. smoothed out. Right. <laughs> 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 till I'm slumped. <laughs> no edges. Uh, uh, you ain't got no edges and shit. Nah, <laughs> fuck that. The crazy part about that is that the company that created OxyContin just received the patent to address the opioid addiction. So you, you created the crisis thing, and now though. you get to solve it. Remember the bird flu? Mm -hmm. That shit went under the water. Mm. Came and went. All that shit is... And the only thing that makes more money than the breakup is the reunion. Mm -hmm. so. That's right. That's right. Bird flu, man. I was able to avoid bird flu just by not fucking with no, no whack bitches. <laughs> you know? That's nah. what but... All right, our, our generation. <laughs> if you're lucky, kids don't get fucking chicken pox none of that no more. Thank yeah. God, I never got it. Yeah, 
But that was prominent when we were growing up. Right. Chicken pot, clothes, and measles, mumps. Was it one more? I'm niggas sure. don't get polio. Niggas just get polo. Facts, super <laughs> facts. <laughs> so, Scrans, I mean, um, people might have known you through your shoe game. Yeah, I got... Yeah, I was heavy. You know, once I started getting my own money... What was what was the height the most pairs I had. The most pairs you had, six hundred. Okay, but that's I don't count the sneaker if it's worn. Mm-hmm. So that was six hundred. So, six hundred DS. Yeah, dead stock. Because mm. I've known, you know, I have a lot of friends. Unfortunately, come off of jail, people that are less fortunate. You know, even though I have multiples or tons of sneakers, when I come home, if I'm up to it, I'll I'll clean them. You know, put them in a box or the next day, and I, you know, eventually give them away. Mm-hmm. Give a lot of clothes away, you know. Mm-hmm. I wasn't too for. I wasn't fortunate. My mother had, you know, it was only her. You know, me and my little sister. But you know, you got to pass the blessings forward. But 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 talk about. I mean, I, I, I want to talk about the shoe game and, and really the transformation of it because um, uh, my my introduction of of Fly Club was with you there. Well, I knew the. Uh, I don't know if I'm putting this business out there, but the creator, I mean, the owner, inventor, whatever, flight club you want to call it, I actually used to live not too far from here. He worked at A-Life. Mm-hmm. You know. With Chris Vidal? No. Chris Vidal, this is... Before Chris Vidal? Yeah, I don't want to put his business out there, but Chris Vidal wasn't around. Mm-hmm. Chris Vidal came around, put him into sneaky game, became an animal. But, you know, I introduced him to him. Chris helped build flight club mm-hmm. you can never erase that history okay know? and uh but I, I was you know that that was everybody was their family even now well not too much now because it's took over by goat okay my little man Darwin runs the place now okay a few people but then I want to go then I want to go to the the genesis of it because yeah I'm, because I'm so- flight club uh, essentially this is a this is a landmark oh definitely development for the sneaker game changed yeah. the changed the whole game Flight Club was wasn't it wasn't it like a venue as well yes or was it something else I'm thinking about no 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 no, no, no it, was, it was a store no he's talking about Fight Club with the rappers yeah no that, I always flight, thought it was no, no, saying no Flight like as no, I, know, a, I know I know I know what it, I know what it is I'm just saying like back then I thought it was no no nothing up. Okay. no 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 got it you know they started off on it was Green Street mm-hmm I want to say 812 Green Street. No, 812 is Broadway. Fuck, I forgot. Green Street right off of 8th Street, though. Right yeah. south of 8th Street. Mm. Right yeah. south and of... you know, 8th Street back in the day was... Back like, in the day was the wow. strip. Was the strip. You wanted to go show off. You wanted to talk to bitches. You wanted to catch the jokes. You go up 8th Street. You <laughs> walk around. Jokes. Yeah. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah. Because everybody wanted to go show off. Mm. And back in, in the early night... stop nobody from trying to show off, though. No. Nah. Back in the early 90s, that Just don't strip, get caught slipping. If you had anything, Polo, North Face, mm-hmm. or anything of value of somebody... I did that too. And if you wasn't affiliated with somebody, yeah. you were coming off of it. You were getting stripped naked. Wow. Or you was getting a buck 50. You oh. Know? There was a lot of crazy shit going on back then. Damn. But then Flight Club... At the, it changed the game, but a lot early on, my my spots like I tell you, I used to go to Raspberries, mm-hmm. Hermans, off of Canal. There used to be a lot of speaker shops, and there used to be a lot of sneaker stores in there. I used to, catch, I used to get Canvas Air Force Ones for forty five dollars all the time. But even before that, I used to be a spot called Mister G's uptown on Third Avenue. Mm. I used to get a discus hoodie and a pair of Reebok classes for sixty dollars. And that was, my, you know, whenever... My, that's where you got the name Scrams from. That's yes. that's classic scrambler attire. That's classic hand-to-hand, the at the bodega, scramble attire. Yeah. My, my, my second oldest <laughs> brother used to uh, wear discus a lot. Yeah, and I thought that was the flyest, most they fly, simple Just a little hit right there. And I'm there. like, yo, that shit is ill. Fuck all that. I wish I had the champion is fly now, too, but... I remember one time my mom almost gave me $30 to go to a Met game. Mm. You know what I bought with that? It was cold. Yeah, I'm a mess. Me too. Not too many of us. I bought a Boulay MCM shirt. I got my ass beat. (laughs) And I had to wear that shit in the cold. But I wanted to be like the drug dealers. Mm. I didn't know what it was. You know? 
That's what shop in on 116th from La Marqueta, which is, you know, it's still there. It's mm-hmm. a mall, actually a market now. I don't know if it was a market back then. It, they actually showed it in the beginning of Fitty Music Box. Mm-hmm. From 116 and Lex to third and around. Mm-hmm. There was mad sneaker stores over there. And there were sneaker stores on 103rd and 3rd. It was Mr. G's, Tom Dick and Harry's. Shout out to Tony for pain in the ass. I haven't seen you in a minute. You know, you, you're talking about the mom and pop days yeah. of sneaker stores. Yeah, that. I mean, man. who who could who can afford an account now from Nike? It's go. It, it, what I think is going to happen is what happened a while ago. It's going to go big box, mm-hmm. and then remember the time Foot Locker didn't have shit. Mm-hmm. They were going back to the mom and pops. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen because it's too much shit. Mm-hmm. Too much shit. They just closed that foot action on 42nd. On uh, 6th Ave, was it, was it foot action? Wait a minute, hold on, hold on. The one they, they just, just opened? Not too long on the corner? Yeah. It's dead. I was there. When I went to the show, when I went up, when I went up with Solis, I got off the Yeah, train. yeah, yeah. They, they just, no just opened there. the shop. They just, just yeah, opened like that spot. Yeah, maybe two, three years ago, right? It's gone. Damn. Yeah. Damn, damn. So so it's going to go, the game is going to revert back to the, the I, wood stacks. Huh? I think so. Okay. But who knows? Mm-hmm. You know, there's not too many Koreans as they ran the game back then. Right, right. Well, well hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Deals. Hold on for a second. Hold on for a second. Before, well, before the Koreans was the Jew. Of okay. course, Jew man. You know, Jew, then time. the Koreans, then the Indian cats. When the Indian cats came, to me, I feel like Koreans, you could get you could get some play with them. Nah, really. If you bought if you bought enough pairs. Nah. They was hard body, but now the, the Indian, Indian cats. Like downtown Brooklyn, man, they used to. Nah, I, I, Indian I, cats, man, be be they be love. Yeah, See, nah, that's, nah, that's nah, the I, I never got love for the Indian cats. Negotiate with me. Yeah, bro. Yeah, and nah, they is... they smell money on you. That's why. <laughs> They, they must have smelled money on me too. I don't know why, but nah, I, Indian cats play hard. Nah, I always nah, got love for Indian cats. Yeah, me too. Koreans still to this day, I have a shoe for fucking thirty years and still want. Yeah, but well, that's that. Listen, that's true too. Some of them dudes will have. Shout to my man Ducky at Major in DC. He will have a pair of shoes from six years ago, and it'd be, it'd be box plus tax. <laughs> yeah, like Jack Spicy Action in Bushwick. Mm-hmm. Shit's turning yellow. It's yeah. one box price. <laughs> Fuck out of here. Don't let it be more than one ten. He'll put the tax on it. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I hate the hottest sneaker store too. Mm-hmm. Shit was a headache, bro. You you had sneakers and low in the spot. Yeah, we were the first. My part, shout out to Drew, my partner. That was his idea. Yeah. We had a little section. You came to the Def Jam party? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I came down. I came down there because I mean, y- y'all were, y'all were close to Century Twenty One. Yeah, around the block. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like you know. That shit was a big fucking pit of money wasted. Oh, uh, listen. We should have never. We had a small store. We should have never went to the big spot. Yeah, yeah. Too much. Well, you you know, you know what it is too. I mean, to be honest with you, we, we've moved past brick and mortar locations. We moved past that. I still think a brick and mortar done right will do good. <sighs> In New York, with that monthly nut, I think so. Well, that, I just say that because you know I, I got I'm in every walk of life. I know everybody, mm-hmm. so I, I I know I could bring people in, mm-hmm. and I I know how to move and shake. But I, I don't I don't want to sell just items. I want to sell experience. Yes. I want to teach. You know, because these kids they lack guidance. They just buy what they see is relevant. Like I went to a, a, a panel discussion at the MoMA. Mm-hmm. Uh, I actually brought this up the other day. You know, Culture and Curtis is, right? Yes. So he had... Uh, Supreme marketer. Team Epiphany. Gentleman, family man. Yes. Great person. Actually ran the polo store in Atlanta. Okay. In the, in the heyday when it, it counted. So he had on uh, some Virgil Off-Whites. So the kids, the little young kids were going crazy. He walked the kid over and pointed to my Terra Homar. Well, is it Terra Homar? Well, one of the Humaras, mm-hmm. and he's like, you got to pay attention to stuff like this, kids. This doesn't really mean nothing. Those are shoes. So he's pushing the culture, and I hate to even use the word culture. He's pushing the youth in the right direction, mm-hmm. and I feel like that has to be done because it's people are just going to chase nonsense. Right. No disrespect to Virgil, get your money, but I'm not a fan of your product. Right. You know. Right. Even this whole Yeezy shit is whack to me. The, the Yeezy shit is, is taking a, a turn, taking a funny the turn. Yeezy one for Nike. Yes, 
Hands down, yes. One of my top five sneakers. Yes, I agree. Comfortable. I agree. I've even, I still got it. I wear that shit to shovel because mm. it's high enough. It's a fucking amazing shoe. Yeah, the easy one is still his best shoe. Yes, I don't. I didn't like the second one. That's for, for skinny jeans. Yeah, the skinny second jeans, one, and then when I they did that all red version, I was like, they, I wasn't they, jacking that shit. Yeah, they, they wild out. They wild out. But I like that easy one in net. That net colorway, oh, I like that joint. Yeah, but the black one's the best. Yeah, that the black ones. The black the ones, are the, that's the hype beast. See, now you're becoming a hype beast, man. I had all three. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, because my guy didn't even want to sell me them in the store. He's like, yeah, they're 400. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. He's like, you can't have them. I, won't, I, I feel bad selling you a sneaker for that much. Yeah. I had my boy go, and he had sent somebody else to get them for me. I tried to get the black ones. I, I actually took a trip to Philly. I got them in Flatbush. I took a trip to Philly, went to Ubik. Wow, Tried to see if I could if I could if I could line up for the black ones because I was like, New York, it wasn't gonna happen for me. You big, I think that's where they release the fuck. What's this guy? What's the deep the the, the drama from the Quest Love? Quest Loves, yeah. They, they did a Quest Love Air Force One. Quest Love Air Force there, One. I went there with Chris uh-huh. for the release with uh, Rebecca. Did you catch? Yeah. Okay. You know Rebecca. Uh, his, uh, Black Dot Silas. Oh, yes, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. She listened to Carter. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Little. So, so, I mean, so, so the, the, the internet's are not really understanding how deep you go with, with, with gear, with kicks, with, with lifestyle. It's, it's. You like, like you're being I, too low key. Yeah, because you know I'm humble. Like I know, you know no, I, I need like you. I need bitches. you to get like I, flex. I need you to be. I, I need to have a little wine for me to start okay, talking okay, some more shit. Okay. <laughs> Garcon, I, I, I'm trying to lay off the liquor lately, but um, I mean, yeah, like I'm always involved in in any and every type of scene, like, but from day one, you know. Don't cover your mouth. Don't cover your mouth, man. We're not, oh. we're not hearing you. Oh, you didn't hear me? My bad. I said I've been involved in, like, damn near every scene since mm-hmm. day one. You know, I know everyone everywhere. Yeah. You know, I don't like asking for shit. I'll pay for it. You know, I've just been blessed to be in the right places and know the right people. Mm-hmm. And I think that goes back to me being a straight-up individual and being honest and fair with everyone. Yeah. You know, I never was shady. Uh... I never took nothing that wasn't my size. Even, you know, just take it. I'm like, nah, you know. Salute you on that. Salute you on that. I mean, I had a, uh, uh, I mean, I had a lineup for the uh, the Cavs 4, the mm-hmm. retro release. I, I called it the Knicks 4, but it was the Cavs 4. I did too. All right. Uh, man, when I came up there, they only had size 8 left. They wouldn't give me a size 12. They said they didn't have no more 12s left. And my man was like, buy them, man. And, and, you know. And I was just like, nah, somebody wants them that eight. Somebody needs that eight. The only time I would do it is one of my friends I know wanted it, mm-hmm. and I would buy it. Okay. But I wasn't charging them. Right. You know, they, right. they either it's a gift or they pay me what I pay. Right, 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 right. You know. Right. And right. I put a lot of people into good places as far as getting shoes. Yeah. Like, nobody was going to any life like that. I introduced a lot of people to A Life, mm-hmm. Flight Club, Clientele. Mm-hmm. You know, Supreme always had a following. Uh, Nam de Gear, I put damn near everybody in there. Shouts to Angelo, who used to work in there, who's now, he left Supreme, and now he's running that brand Awake. Mm-hmm. It's the next best thing. Dig it. And, Dig it. Uh, and he's very, very aware. And, like, again, I hate saying for the culture, but he's doing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Like, he's giving back to the communities. You know, he's not just milking, you know. There's another uh, brand, Noah, keep an eye out for. Okay. Uh, he used to design for Supreme, but they actually have the best sweatpants right now. Okay. And the quality is amazing. A long, long drawstrings, too, so I can let them just hang yep. down to my ankle? <laughs> like, I feel like the drawstrings on sweatpants are not long enough right now. No, that's true. Ever. You know, I want mine to, to hang past my feet so that I step on them, and then I pull my <laughs> pants down, and I stumble, and then I make a, a crazy... Damn, and it's on video. Uh, damn. damn. Internet. Yeah, done, done, done. I have to, I have to go into off the, the porch. I have to go into the J Electronica cave then after that. That shit, I felt like that bad, too. <laughs> I put it on Instagram, too. You seen that? No, no, I didn't see you. All right. I left the this, this strip club drunk, walking to the diner to go eat before going to after hours. So, graffiti. 
catch a tag on this hotel window. I stand on the table. I bust my fucking ass. Like, if you look at it, you be like, this nigga died. <laughs> I got up, caught the tag, and walked off. But the next day, mm. oh, my God. Mm. That shit hurt. Mm. So on my Instagram. It was funny. You know, you can't keep shit like that to yourself. Yeah, yeah. But everybody was comparing that to the meat fall. That's hilarious. <laughs> but see, that that's, again, that's part of your realness, too. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm, I breathe and bleed like everybody else. And also, back to the fashion shit. You don't got to spend that much money. You don't have to buy the most expensive shit. You can look fly in a white T-shirt. Mm -hmm. Buy yourself some gray sweats. Get a nice pair of sneakers. Clean is important. You know, kids, yo, know, go home and clean your sneakers. You know, a lot of us don't have it like that, you know. Make your shit look like, you know, you care for it. Yeah. You know, I know you clean your sneakers when you was younger. All, all the time. All, I mean, I you, still do it. even now, even now, you know, you, you, you got your rotation and you say, all right, man, I want to switch up the season. Man, you go through that cleaning. Nah. You go through that cleaning before you rebox. You cannot put nah, your shit back in the box. Okay. Oh, you do every day. Yeah, yeah I mean, because I, 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 I got a I'm kind of a big apartment now, so I keep everything in the hallway. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, clean them like at the end of the week. Mm -hmm. But I usually don't even... It's like three or four sneakers. I don't because it's a pain in the ass to get the shoes. I got to tell you something. My cleaning has actually become simpler that I've stopped drinking. Yes. I used to. You would have pee pee spatter on your shit. <laughs> the <king. laughs> All right, particularly like like your white midsoles, <laughs> so you have to clean them shits because if you if you had pee pee spatter and you let the shit sit for a while, that adds to the yellowing of your shit. Well, you, now I treat my sneakers. You know, I'm blessed, mm. but uh, I call them Uncle Mayor. Gives me, you know, crepe attack. Okay. And then I got my people, my people um, at uh, Jason Mark. Jason Mark, yeah, Jason Mark, shit is good. Loser, you know, I get yeah. shit. You know. Yep. So I, that, and even back then, that five dollar spray. Remember when Full Lock you used to get the fifty off? Yes. Whatever you fucking wanted, it was like just buy the spray. Yeah. That shit worked. Yeah. Yeah. That shit took care of your sneakers. Yep. That's another thing. I used to have somebody at Full Locker, it was 50 off everything. So whenever I buy two Yellow Constructs, two Rod Lavers, two Stan Smith, and whatever else I was fly, but I always got those Adidas. And then people were like, yo, why you got those fucking Skippies on? I'm like, bro, you don't know what this shit. And then they, we had an explosion to Stan Smith, like maybe two, three years ago. It was you, insane. You know what? Rod Laver never really, Rod Laver's Rod never Laver's really caught that lick. Fire. But niggas that know. I still got Rod Laver. And the Laver. funny thing about a Rod Laver, though, is that your Rod Laver, you have more credibility to me when I see a Rod Laver semi-dirty. Rod Laver was the, was the shoe for me where it's like, boom, that, that, was, that was my white tennis shoe. And when I, I don't mean white as in color. I mean white as, as in racial. Mm -hmm. Like, if I, if I want to be around some white people... I'm going to wear this Rod Laver And maybe it might have A little grass stain on it maybe, You know I mean I'll go to Central Park Summer stage in it I'll go to some Outdoor festival By the end of the Summer season Boom I'm getting rid of it anyway But you bought Two or three of them They had came out With a leather Rod Laver And that shit was the best I had a suede toe cap But the leather You could clean The leather you could keep Clean Better than that mesh Cause the dirt Will get inside yeah. that mesh And it'd be a bitch To clean But the leather Rod Laver That's a slept on shoe I, Simple, clean, to see, the point. I want to do like a top five shoe, more my shoe. But, you know, I don't like reaching out to these people. Like, my boy said it best. He was like, you influence the influencers. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I just being me. And, you know, he was like, yo, they steal they, this whole shit from your Instagram. They repost your old pictures. I'm like, that's what it's there for. Yeah. I'll do it for attention. You know, you got to teach somehow. Yeah. If you're not going to do it verbally, yeah. do it through your pictures. Yeah. You know, but... We need more people who are more genuine to be involved with shit. Mm -hmm. You know, well, so, everybody, everybody trying to catch a lick, right? Of course, I mean, everybody I trying to catch that. a I don't lick. Knock nobody's money. Uh, I mean, listen, everybody trying to catch a lick. So that people find a person. Who do I follow? That I could catch that lick from. Who do I find that I could catch that information from to move my shit? And and that's dope. But when you catching that lick, show love. They don't. Show love, show love to the people that you you know, that that you that you getting a check from, that you you know what I mean. Help us keep rocking. I, I felt you know a kind of way, a 
few years ago, man, when Timberland used uh, Gary Warnett to tell their story during their 40th you anniversary. About that? Yeah, I mean, I felt the way. Did I tell you? I said, don't. I'm gonna tell you this now. Then when you speak to Rebel, Rebel thought you worked with fucking Timberland. Rebel, me and Rebel went to dinner one night. And Rebel was like, yo. Please tell me you work for Timberland. And I explained them the whole fuck shit. And I was like, nah, Tommy, I don't. And he was like, yo, I, I'm so sick. He was sick. He took me to dinner. <laughs> Rebel don't take nobody to dinner. Nah, nah, Rebel's, Rebel's solid gold. But he was <laughs> sick because he was like, yo, I can't believe that. He really thought you worked that they don't That they don't have you connected for real, for real. And I'm like, listen, the truth is the people there will hit me up and be like, hey, I got a pair of boots for you. And that was great because, hey, listen, I was going to buy these shits anyway. And you was going to talk about them regardless. Regardless. But then when I was like, oh, sweat, wait a minute, somebody is cribbing my notes. And I love Gary Warnett. Rest in peace. Because he was a genuine guy, and he spoke to me very genuinely, very honestly. But he's cribbing my notes to write, you know, uh, on a program for them. And I'm like, wait a minute, y'all, hold on for a second. Y'all know, y'all already know this. Oh, everybody knows. Everybody's good with this. Oh, damn, damn. But there it is. It's the game, man. There it is. Bam. And you say, God damn, this is the dope jam. So, Scrans, it, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. And you're going to keep teaching people. You're going to keep styling. Um, product of the 90s. Yeah. What's gotta, next for that? We got to we gotta edit the product. We got we, we to gotta film some more. But like, So, we're talking about a documentary series? Yes. Okay. I don't want to just put out one movie. I want to, you know... Like a, like something that like you see on Netflix as a series. Yes. Like ongoing. That's what I want. Like season one, season two. Yes. And I'm not aiming at famous people who already got attention. Okay. Like shout outs to Revo, DK seven one eight, has a great, amazing story. Mm -hmm. Genuine person, been through the war. Mm. Shouts to Don Kagan. Yep. He was in the trenches. He done it all. Had a little slip up mm -hmm. back, but you know we interviewed him. Mm -hmm. we got him. We did Peter Paul. Oh, what's this guy? He did Pun's cover all work. Oh, can't think of his name right now. But we just got like people that are really. If you know, you know who you are. But the world needs to know. Okay. 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 Row project. Row project. Roll Project. Um, internet's follow T H E R O H E Project, the Roll Project on Instagram. And and find out if they got any pieces left. Um, Scrams, I need that P2. If you only have yours left, I need yours, sir. And uh, you're a generous man. You're a generous man. I mean, you. it's just gear to you. Let me let me get that I mean, piece though. It is always gear. Yeah, somebody's always gonna appreciate more than you. Uh, we're working, you know, trying to find a new factory. We uh, we would love to get the shit done in America. Yeah. We would love to shit to say made in America, but the quality sucks out here. Mm -hmm. You know, it sucks to say it like that. We sampled a few times. We've gotten ripped off. Just Blaze, loan, scram some of your slaves, please. Oh, Lord. Just, I need you to speak to those people up there a little more. Just knows what we could do. Yeah. Just want some fucking... I can't... <laughs> the shit that he wants me to make him is insane. He's got a fucking imagination, you know. But he can make it happen. Okay, okay. Because the person we spoke to don't know what they're doing up there. Okay. What else you got cooking? You got a rap record coming out? You gonna bring the feeling back? Mixtape. It's funny because uh, another kid I, I help work with, he's a personality. You should get bring him up here. His name is Jazz Soon. He got mm -hmm. a project with Nems coming out called Gorilla Monsoon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Shout out to Nems, FYL. Yeah, fuck his life. Uh, what I was saying about, oh, with Frank. Damn, I just got thrown off. What I was saying before? So we were talking about jazz soon. 
No, but before that. No. Oh, oh, the, oh, oh, the project that uh, the the mixtape project. Oh yeah, he he's a producer, mm -hmm. and he has a sound that I like. Like when you hear the beat, you hear the snap, crackle, pop when, when the record plays. He's like, "Yo, on come to the booth." He, I was like, "Yo, I can't rap." Even though I've tried when I was younger, <laughs> he was like, you just talk shit. Just talk. You know? So he wants me to do that. So that might be a part of the whole thing. Well, the show, there's no set date, but it's going to be sometime February, March, in the new year. Okay. Book, same time. Okay. Merch, same time. And in between, you know, we, we're pushing this road project. We got okay. some new stuff. You know? It's just... Getting it right and it has to be quality. Yes, I can't put out no. I, I trust. Shit. I trust that y'all not gonna put out nothing. I can't so buy far. a Yupong hat and do it. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I can't do no. Because because you not you would not you would go nuts if the internet came at you sideways on some quality shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, also Dallas is starting a petition. We spoke about it. I'm putting him on blast now. He's gonna start the petition. And we're going to send it up to Ralph Lauren. We need 5,000 signatures. That can happen. Oh, that's easy. You know, get Roll Project up at Polo. Mm -hmm. Oh. That's a bet. That's nothing. 5, that's 000? a bet. That's a bet. We got that. That's a bet. Get that up there. Get that's some a bet. quality coming back to you. That's a bet. I mean, listen. Listen, Ralph, you know, you you at the point now where you loan the money to God. You know? Wow. I'm serious. God need a little, little help Saturday. <laughs> let's let's work that out. Let's work that out. Internets, man. Listen, you got you got something that ten years from now you're gonna be able to go and open up and be like, oh shit, this road project shit is incredible. And everything on this functionality, like I wore the CP Marine hat with the D ring. Mm -hmm. It was made to reflect the sun. I wore that shit in the pool, reflected the sun. Everything has a reason. It's not. Listen. It's functionality listen, first. Listen. Every piece that y'all produce, his retro work now. It's better than his original work. All I can say is that, that what y'all did for Roe Project, it, it, it has me so hyped. It, it, it actually made his retro shit more relevant. I hate to use the word relevant, but it made his retro shit relevant. All right? The Alpine hat, this P-Wing hat, that... You got the Alpine hat? I got, I got two of them. Yo, people are feeding for that hat now. I got two of them. I got two of them. That was, that was the first joint I got. That was the first joint I got because I love the color blocking. It matches the hoodie that just dropped. Perfect. Crazily. They took your hat and made their hoodie. I believe. All right? I believe. I, uh, listen, I see it. People said that we were ahead of our time, that that we foreseen the future. It makes sense now, but we just, a couple of kids, we've seen a void and we wanted to fill it. That's it. And, like I said, it has to be quality. Yeah. We wasn't putting out no bullshit. Right. You know? The passion is there. The passion is in the product. And the passion is in the project, Row Project. Internets, this podcast is called Talk Architecture. I'm glad y'all found us. We're in season two, and we're pulling out some crazy true Yorkers. Today we had Scram Zeno, a.k.a. Dick Wolf, a.k.a. Professional Big Kid. A.k.a. The Big Influence. A.k.a. The Influencer with the Influenza. Mm. All right, oh. sick with it. Wow. That boy sick with it. Back. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty good. Internet's Highline Ballroom, September 29th, New York Grimes. This is the grimiest rap show you are going to ever see inside Highline Ballroom. Conway the Machine, Benny the Butcher, Crime Apple, DJ Skiz, Mad Dirty Fingernail Niggas, Highline Ballroom, Don't Bathe, New York Grimes. Keep it grimy. The Talk and Texture podcast is a presentation of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to Combat Jack. Episodes are executive produced by A. King and Dallas Penn. All episodes are engineered superbly by Brother Christopher. 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 By Brother Christopher.
Christopher. 